Greetings, Danger Seekers. So, I wanted to do something a little bit different with this video. I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some funny and weird retro stories and items that I found recently that are related to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Uh, these stories actually appeared in real newspapers in the 1970s. So let's take a look. So our first story comes from November of 1974. Rice football team was grossed out by a movie. The Rice University football team took in a gory movie the night before their game against Arkansas, and the resulting nightmares apparently affected the owls on the field. So keep in mind, this isn't some high school team. This is a university team. These are grown adults. It's gross, said rice punter Mike Landrum of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which the owls took in Friday night. It made me sick. About half the team walked out of it. I was one of them. I couldn't sleep a wink all night long. He dropped the ball in the end zone Saturday, leading to an Arkansas score in the Razorbacks' 25-6 win. So this dude, Mike, he fumbles the ball, and his team loses the game, and he goes on public record with, like, national news sources, and he says the reason his team lost is because they saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it was really scary. I mean, could you imagine if somebody did that today? Like, some team loses, and they go on ESPN or whatever, and they blame a scary movie for losing the game. They would be memed and roasted for the rest of their lives. I mean, like when they were on the road, all the fans would just mess with them constantly. They'd be holding up Leatherface signs. The opposing team mascots would be carrying chainsaws. And could you imagine if you could do that for everything? Like, you screw up at your job, and you just blame a horror movie you just saw? Norris, you were supposed to have that quarterly earnings report on my desk at 9 a.m. Okay, listen. Have you ever heard of the movie The Human Centipede? Asked at his Sunday news conference if his players had similar experiences, Coach Frank Broyles said, We used to put a great deal of stock in the type of movies we saw, but you don't have much choice anymore, particularly in a small town where there might just be one movie. Okay, look, I get that there weren't a lot of options for entertainment back then, but I mean, you still don't have to go to a movie. Especially if your players are a bunch of babies with weak tummies. Just saying. Alright, hold on. I need to check this team out. So, the year this happened, Rice University had a 2-8-1 and eight and one record. So, they lost 8 games. Damn, how many horror movies did they watch that season? The 1974 Fighting Owls of Rice University. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horror movies, man. So this next story is from Toronto, and it happened in 1978. Roaring Saw Frightens Murder Movie Patrons Moviegoers ran screaming into the streets when a man carrying a roaring chainsaw ran down the aisle of a theater where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was showing. Some people thought it was a promotion stunt, but plenty more ran screaming out of the theater, police spokesman Arthur Turner said Saturday. What happened? was these four young fellows went out and had a few beers Friday night, and then the others dared one of them to do it. So he did. Turner said the cutting chain had been removed from the saw. I think I'm mainly concerned that someone could just sneak a chainsaw into a movie theater in first place. Andre Seward, 21, has been charged with being a common nuisance. Okay, so what is a common nuisance? Is that like disturbing the peace in the U.S.? Okay, so the definition is when someone... A. Endangers the lives, safety, health, property, or comfort of the public. Or B. Obstructs the public in the exercise or enjoyment of any right that is common to all the subjects of Her Majesty in Canada. So he obstructed their right to enjoy a movie without pooping their pants, I guess? I also wanted to add that this story even made it to a newspaper in Melbourne, Australia. So apparently this was an international incident. Okay, so we have another Canadian article here. This one is from Vancouver. People who go to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre after reading British Columbia Provincial Film Classifier R.W. McDonald's warning deserve what they get, he says. He said the film is exactly as he described it in the warning he ordered for advertisements. An extremely gruesome, disgusting picture. 
So this representative from the British Columbia provincial government ordered that all the promotion for this movie must state that it's an extremely gruesome, disgusting picture. So I found one of these ads. I mean, they actually did put the disclaimer in the ad. Warning, extremely gruesome, disgusting picture. I mean, I feel like that probably increased the ticket sales, to be honest, but... Later in that same article, they talked to the assistant manager of a movie theater where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was playing. The assistant manager said a lot of people have asked for their money back after seeing the show, but we can't return their money unless they get sick. He said one woman has been sick, but she was pregnant. So does that mean she doesn't get her money back? I don't... Also, isn't that kind of a weird policy? Like, how do you enforce that? Do you have to, like, see them puke? Do they have to actually puke in the theater during the movie? Was the policy just for this movie? Could you puke during a romantic comedy and still get your money back? I don't know, I'm just curious. All right, so back before social media and Reddit and things like that, you know, before the internet, if you wanted the world to hear one of your opinions, uh, one of your best bets was to write a letter to your local newspaper and hopefully they would print your letter into the paper and other people would get to read it. This letter is from an angry Canadian citizen and it appeared in the North Bay Nugget in 1975. A friend and I have just seen a movie called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre at a theater here in North Bay. As a result, I must question the Ontario Censorship Board's criteria for censoring violence in films. I must ask the censor board why you have let Chainsaw Massacre pass intact. Do your film censors feel the majority of the public will accept movie scenes of the following? Okay, and he just lists off a bunch of violent stuff in the movie. Smashing heads, chainsaw this, chainsaw that. Also keep in mind a lot of this stuff was merely implied in the movie. You don't actually see a lot of the really gory stuff happen on screen in this first movie. I did read the ad for The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I did see the restriction sign and the stills of the movie displayed outside the theater. I am not upset about the admission price, and I admit I did expect to see some violence in a movie with the word massacre in the title. Yeah, I saw the poster, and the trailer, and the movie's title, and the photos, and I read the reviews, and I was warned by my cousin in British Columbia that this was going to be an extremely gruesome, disgusting picture. But murders with chainsaws? Who the f*** saw that coming? Why did we stay to see it all? We were astounded by such a story, and waited for a natural conclusion, justice, and to find out what it was really all about. Unfortunately, it's up in the air ending left this to our imaginations. I suggest that any abnormal person seeing one or more films like Chainsaw Massacre could get a clear impression that they could commit murder and escape justice. Sincerely, Jacques Lefort. So basically, he's upset that the movie didn't end with the bad guys getting killed or going to jail. And he thinks that this sends the message to potential chainsaw maniacs that it's okay to go on chainsaw massacres because you'll get away with it. Which, okay, look, if you're crazy enough to watch this movie and think, you know what, that looks like fun. Maybe I should go on a chainsaw rampage. If you're that psychotic, I don't think seeing the bad guys get killed or arrested at the end of the movie is going to change your mind. Oh, well, I'm glad I stayed for the end. Turns out killing a bunch of people with a chainsaw is a bad idea. So here's a quick bit from that same newspaper, but a few months later. Mrs. Maycock cited the occurrence of a movie promotion for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which depicted a deformed monster chasing a naked woman. It was aired at 4.30 p.m. during the Flintstones Comedy Hour. Hey kids, tell your mom and dad to take you to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's an extremely gruesome, disgusting picture. Okay, this last one, it's another angry citizen, but this time from London. Sirs, it does, I think, indicate much about the true moral climate of this country and the moral watchdogs of the nation, like Miss Mary Whitehouse, Lord Longford, and the Festival of Light in particular, that whilst an innocent and harmless photoplay, like more about the language of love, is seized by the police. Not one voice 
has been raised to even question the morality of the film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Given the choice, I would always prefer to watch people making love rather than watch them being butchered. But apparently, our moral paragons think otherwise. Yours sincerely, David Godin. Godin? Godin? Ah, yes. Given the choice, I would always prefer to watch people get boned rather than watch them get deboned. Man, the Friday the 13th movies are going to be a real roller coaster for this guy in a few years. Why is that making love, I see? More, please. Oh, drats. They've been murdered. Oh, my. More lovemaking. David Likey. Oh, come on. Murdered again? Really? Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss out on whatever weird thing I post next. And watch one of these if you feel like it. And until next time, later, Ranger Seekers.